and welcome to the Video Gamer Showcase. I'm David Ballback, and I'm here to show you some of the games that are available for your favorite home entertainment systems. The Sega Genesis, the 3DO Interactive Multiplayer, and the Super Nintendo. A lot of time and effort goes into marketing a game successfully. Let's take a look behind the scenes at the making of and some gameplay for NFL 95 from Sega. Sega! 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 <laughs> Now he's stopping back to make this pass, and as he scans to look for his receivers, he sees a distraction into the audience, and it's just very uh, large super fan, right? Yeah, large man. And right as he catches eyes with the guy, he gets blindsided and tackled, and uh, it illustrates the game in the game how you can see downfield 65 yards. Yeah, a lot of games you can't see very far downfield, or if you can, they put up little boxes, and uh, this is just a a way to emphasize that point in the game. Joe's known for being able to see way downfield and seeing all the all the receivers, so it seemed perfect that he would actually get distracted in the stand by someone in the stands. And roll sound. Anyone take three? Speed. Worker? In background? combination of great programming and great licensing. We have the real teams and real players through the NFL and NFLPA licenses. We've gone out and done, drawn hundreds of animations for this game and put in uh, hundreds and hundreds of sound effects for this game. So you really get the bone crunching sound effects with hits. And the players we've actually rated in 15 different categories. So players will perform according to their rating for speed, size, strength, and stamina and so forth. So it's as realistic as we can make it. And the game is really revolutionary. For the first time in a Genesis game, the field actually tilts while you're playing, and you can now see 65 yards down the field. This is unheard of for a football game. We also have a great new feature that lets you be the receiver. You can take control of the receiver, run your own route, and actually call for the ball when you break free. No other game has ever allowed you to do that. We also have a feature where you can trade players and sign free agents, which has never been done before in a football game. So you can try and build your own dynasty. And if you like Joe Montana better than Steve Young, well, you can trade and get Joe back. We set up the Sega Sports brand about two years ago, and our mission statement is to create the most realistic and authentic line of sports video games possible. We want people 16 to 34 who maybe weren't video game players but are sports fans to be playing our, our sports video games. And the way to play sports games in the 90s is with Sega Sports video games. It used to be dice games or board games or other kinds of games, but if you're really into sports, you should be getting into video games. The 
distraction for Joe. As Joe's fading back, Joe sees our, our guy Tiny in the stands, and it's just like frozen, and then just gets creamed, you know, because he's so stunned by what he has seen by the super fan uh, that he's just unaware of the defender's coming back. And then after he gets sacked, that's when he gets traded. Well, Joe's just trying to get I've got two boys, 1-8 and 1-12. It's kind of hard not to play video games. They're, they're Sega fans, I'll guarantee uh, Just stand up and hold it. Go, Joe! So the vaults are the... Or is this the hike shot? Is that... That's the hike show. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Sega has Sega Sports has a history of um, taking a game to the next level, of not being satisfied with what they did the year before, and instead of building on an older engine, they've created something from scratch that's revolutionary and that it lets you pass like you've never been able to pass before. Well, it's fantastic. I mean, it's really the only way you, you know, for the armchair quarterback, you get to sit at home and play the game as the quarterback would play it. When you drop back, you're dropping back like Joe would drop back. You've seen your, your receivers run their deep roots. Um, there's no confusion. Nobody's isolated in a window. You've got them on the field, and you can make that split-second decision and really feel like you're in the game. I would say that it's probably, given the current generation of hardware and the, and, and the technology level that we have in the consumer marketplace today, you are going to be hard-pressed to better this. I mean, it's taken... It's taken the game to a level where if you're the competition, you're looking to see how you can improve and how you can make your product stand above NFL 95. And that's a cut. Okay, Rob, we'll need to now move. good. I think that uh, things are becoming more and more realistic in the games, and uh, as the years go by, uh, they can do more and more things and make the games as much or as close to uh, being a part of the game and being able to play in the game uh, as you can get being a spectator. Uh, things that they can do just amaze you. I mean, it, it's, it's incredible. Even more so than that, I think the thing, the unique thing about it is you can become the receiver, and you can actually, uh, when you think you're open, you can even call for the ball, and the ball comes to you, and sometimes it hits you, sometimes it misses you, but um, it, it's fun seeing it not only from the quarterback's point of view, but also from a receiver's point of view. Um, being traded. You can get traded. <laughs> uh, you can sign free agents. I mean, on the other thing is in the throw in the game, from what I understand, uh, is the fact that you can you can actually see 65 yards down the field when you're going back to throw. And I could never reach that far to begin with, but uh, it's a great idea too. Well, I, I think it's because it's so close to the game. Um, the 
athletes themselves, when they play something, it usually has to be pretty close to realistic for them to continue to play it. And they just keep waiting and waiting for the new games to come out because they can't wait to see the new additions to it. And uh, they're all already been all over me. When's your new game coming out? When's your game coming out? I'll let you know, November 15th. Now, be sure. Where Don't go away. We'll be right back after these messages with more Video Gamer Showcase. Thanks to the American Lung Association, more kids with lung disease and breathing problems are able to grow up to become what they were meant to be. A real handful. To help, call 1-800-LUNG-USA. Because when you can't breathe, nothing else matters. belt why no I don't wear my safety belt thank you you could learn a lot from a dummy buckle your safety belt Donkey Kong is back with his sidekick Diddy in Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo this game has it all with great graphics exotic sounds and superb gameplay 
This next video segment will show you what Donkey Kong Country is all about. And it's like, whoa, and it blows your mind. It's all the shading and stuff. It's really well shaded. Everything looks so rounded. And you're really going to think that it's a game that's a generation ahead of its time. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Last second timing stuff in there where you have to jump real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised at the kind of uh, game that Donkey Kong Country is. today on our way to Redmond, Washington to take an exclusive insider's look at Nintendo's new revolutionary yet unreleased game, Donkey Kong Country. Where do they get a load of us? <laughs> Guys, we finally made it. Nintendo of America, the fortress. Let's find out what Donkey Kong Country is all about. Let's go inside. Let's do it. Hey, it's Ken. Ken Lobb, development manager. Hey, man, how's it going? Donkey Kong Country, how you doing? Ken, what is the deal with this here? Yeah, we get a lot of letters, and they like to put pretty pictures on the front of the envelope, so we'll, like, uh, stick it on the wall, you know? So, uh, Ken... You want a banana? Uh, no thanks. Ken, I want in on this Donkey Kong Country thing. I want in. I want on the inside. I don't know. Ken, me and you, pal, we go back a long way? Come on. What do you think? Mm. Old time's sake? Okay, I'll take you to the treehouse. The treehouse? God, I hope there's no climbing involved. What's the password? Diddy. Password? Diddy? Yeah! <laughs> you know, after about a thousand ditties, we finally get into the treehouse. We're gonna say hello to Tony Harmon. He is the product development manager here at Nintendo. Tony, how you doing? You're pretty good. Welcome to the treehouse. Thank you very much. And I wanna know, uh, I wanna know the story behind the game. Are you here to talk about the story? I'm the wrong guy. We need to get Dan here. This is Dan Oak. Oh, Dan! Up. How are you? Pretty good. Good, Dan. I want to know something about this story. Basically, we uh, had a chance to kind of create a new story for Donkey Kong. We gave him a world to live in, some supporting characters. Uh, foremost among those, Diddy Kong, the little Kong wannabe monkey guy. The Kong wannabe? Um, he's a cool little dude who follows Kong around and tries to be just like him. The story actually picks up with Diddy uh, sitting in the jungle guarding the banana horde. No sooner does the uh, storm start, nightfall, Kremlings come, uh, stuck Diddy Kremlings, in the barrel. What are the... Kremlings are the tribe of evil reptilian beings who inhabit the island, and they're very envious of Kong's banana stockpile. As we all are. Yes, as anyone would be. Yeah. And they stuff Diddy in the barrel, punt it in the bushes, and grab all the bananas and take pick off them. Take off the loot. Donkey wakes up and next day Kong wakes up. Where's my bananas? Uh, he goes out to find him. Rescue his little buddy. Find out where he is. But Kong's angry. He's got his little buddy back, but he needs his bananas. Needs so we get the Kremlins, we got Diddy, and we get the big fella. Tony, you, did you have a favorite uh, character? Are there more characters in this? Ah, there's a lot of characters. I like the whole Kong family. We got Cranky. Cranky's the star of the original uh, Donkey Kong game. Still alive, is he? Dad or grandfather played that game. Uh, oh, wow. Then we also have uh, Funky Kong. Funky is kind of the California circuit kind of. Funky Kong. Kong. Yeah, he That's runs nice. uh, Funky Flights, and the Funky Flights allow you to fly around to different parts of the game. We also got Candy Kong. Candy Kong is Donkey Kong's love interest. Now. Okay, good. I was wondering, maybe. Maybe I could uh, take a look at the game? Yep, sure. Right yeah. over here. These guys are so easy. Yeah. This is Armand and this is Rich. Hey, these how you guys, doing? Oh, hey. These guys test Donkey Kong Country for a living. We have hundreds of areas in Donkey Kong Country, and these guys have to play each area probably 100, 200 times each, weeding out all the bugs. This is a prototype board. There is eight ships on this, four meg each, which makes it a 32 meg game, the biggest game ever. Um, 32 megs allows us to do a variety of action and uh, a variety of backgrounds. We have snow levels, jungle levels, the pyramid type levels, pyramid levels, cave level, 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 forest levels, mines, industrial levels, and underground factories, all kinds of a lot of bizarre places, places that you wouldn't expect to find on an island. Yeah, it does. We've got a bunch of guys that call it goodies. These guys help you out. We got Rambi, who's a rhinoceros who bashes through some walls, helps you find some hidden areas. We got Winky the Frog. He's bad. He can jump on top of the water. Yeah, we got Espresso. That's the ostrich, a flying ostrich. And 
use little bitty wings and just flop it along the top of the screen. We have a lot of other special effects we do as well. On the snow level, we have 12 different layers of snow going back and forth. We have uh, forest levels with parallax scrolls for dimension in the game. Well, how did this project get started? Visited my friends at Rare. Rare has been working with Nintendo for a number of years, and uh, Tim Stamper, the head creative person there, was telling me about an idea he had to make a game out of fully rendered characters. Tim! I was just curious as to how you made them look so real. Because we're based in Twycross, we have uh, a zoo about two miles away. And ah, you went to the zoo. The zoo, yeah, and had a, a good look at the gorillas and the monkeys and with video cameras. It was pretty funny. Hey, big fella. Hey, there's Diddy. Diddy Donkey. Oh, get out of the way, Diddy. How's it feel to be a prototype, fellas? Using uh, advanced computers to uh, to produce a, a three-dimensional model that we can that we can display on a computer screen. So, uh, what do we got to eat here? Well, today we got the cream of banana soup, the banana and peanut butter sandwich. Hey, your name is uh, George... Uh... George Zachary from Silicon Graphics. I was wondering if you could help me out a little bit in explaining the game. Sure, it's, uh, it's, it's a really cool game. It was created on this thing called The Challenge, which is this really advanced supercomputer. Basically, picture 20 supercomputers in a box. Now, with all this technology, am I going to have to buy an adapter for my home Nintendo? Not at all. In fact, uh, when the game was created on The Challenge, it was basically specially output to the Super Nintendo game system. So it basically comes in a cartridge, you stick it in the system, and you play. How do we make the, the roundness, the 3D? Actually, it's created on the on the challenge, first in a wireframe. Actually, then you grow shade them, or you can fong shade them, and then you actually texture map them. And you can even trilinearly bitmap interpolate. That sounds a little dangerous. Uh, and let me ask you this. I heard downstairs something about ACM yeah, technology. Yeah, advanced computer modeling. Basically, what you can do with it is it lets you create fully realistic, fully rendered 3D graphics. So the person has a sense of, like, of really being there. Same computers that are used in Terminator 2, Jurassic Park, New movies like True Lies, Mask. A year and a half later, we're closing on the finish of the game. <laughs> All right, here we are. We're about to talk to two guys who play this game 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And guess what, folks? Guess what? They get paid. This is Henry. Henry, say hello. Hey, what's up? Henry, uh, we wondered if maybe you could show us a couple tips and pointers. Yeah, sure. No problem. That'd be great. Great. Okay, well, this is the first level, and this is Donkey Kong's Treehouse, and that's okay. where we got our name from. And there's a banana arrow on top of the trees when you first start. Donkey Kong can drop down there, and you can knock the keg out of the floor, and you can roll it up against the wall and bounce back and ride it. Ah. And Donkey Kong will just cruise straight through the first part of this stage, and it's a good way to get people started off. You can just bowl over some of the tougher enemies that might have gave him a problem. Hey, 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 you hungry? You want a banana? No. Well, I guess I can show you something else, too. This is a snow level later on in the game. It is snowing. Donkey Kong can now ride, you know, ride in barrels and shoot out. And this one part here is a series of barrels, and if you can navigate it properly, almost perfect, and not miss anything, you can score a bunch of free men at the end of the level. A bunch of free men, not just one. A bunch. A blue balloon comes up, and Donkey Kong can grab it. There oh, it is. It's tough. You gotta get it down perfect. And wow, yeah. so you get a bunch of free men. Let's go talk to Isaac. This is Isaac. Isaac, say hello. Hello. Isaac, I was wondering maybe you could uh, show us a couple more pointers. Possible? Yeah, I can do that. No problem. These guys are great. All right. What do we got? We got okay. more snow. Yeah, we have more snow here. Okay. okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna jump on this igloo and use this really slow vulture. It looks peculiar. Peculiar enough to get us into a bonus level. Bonus. And I must say, this is one of over a hundred bonus levels. A hundred bonus levels. Yeah, and in this bonus level, Not you have to... you see in every game. <laughs> Absolutely. You have to guess which barrel that this golden medallion is going to wind up in. Like to take a guess? Uh, yeah, the far right. Oh, you're very good. Okay, the second uh, tip I'm going to show you, it involves our little friend Diddy. Diddy. Yeah, Diddy's the cool guy. You walk over to this little thing here, you jump on top of it, and you're going to grab that rope, let the rope take you over, jump right on top of that little stump in the ground, pick up the TNT, walk over to this oil can, blow it up, and fall right into another bonus level. Now, what you want to do in this bonus level is jump out of this canister, out of this little can, and grab the balloon. So we have some pointers now. Good thing you came with us, because you learned some things today that, boy, you're not going to learn just anywhere else. You thought it was going to be a waste of your time, didn't you? Fried green bananas. Bananas out gratin. 
video game music should draw you into the game. In Donkey Kong Country, we had graphics that were way beyond anything else that's ever been done. We were also hoping to get some music better than anything that's ever been done. This music, for example, is very upbeat, fits with the jungle. It's an early level. The level's not very hard. The music is kind of nice. Okay, now here we have the music that goes with the water level. Now, in this level, you've just finished a really, really hard level in the game. We use this music and this fairly easy level as kind of a reward. Because the music is so good, we're putting this music on a CD. You know, something that's big in Japan for many, many years is game music on CD. Hasn't been a big hit in America because maybe the music hasn't been quite up to what you hear on the on the radio. Is every daytime you're gonna lose it, dude. Yeah. We got massive Smurfs attacking on the yeah. scaffold level. What are, what are they? What are the big blue blue? Well, the reason why I like them is because for one, they're big, they're blue, and they're buff. Well, and you, you hit them, and they kind of bounce. The morphing, the morphing guys, rocks. The morphing guys rocks. are so yeah. cool, man. You touch yeah. these barrels, and the lights turn on and off. And uh, these rock guys are just kind of rolled up. And you hit this light, they unroll, and they start walking towards you. It's so cool. And, it's really and you got to switch them on and off. So, so scary. <laughs> well, yeah, on guard's uh, the fisher rod, and he just kind of pokes you with the, his swordfish front. and Pokes the bad guys. Yeah. No, 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 Do you guys get to ride? Do we get to my ride Minecraft? Oh, yeah. The Minecraft. That was a favorite stage. It's That's a, your favorite stage? Yeah, it's a pretty cool stage. You're mining? What are well, we doing? You're on the tracks, and a lot of them are broken, so you gotta avoid, you know, a lot of the broken tracks so you don't fall into the caverns. When we put this out, what do you think What do you think your friends are gonna think about this game? Uh, I don't think really you have to tell them all that much. Once they see the pictures, yeah, they'll be like, you have to have it, you know it, get it. It's one of those games you don't get bored with. Yeah. You know, I've played it probably a hundred times, over a hundred times now, and I'm still yeah. getting better. I'm still getting yeah. better in stages. There's certain really? stages I can improve on. Keep getting better. Thank you for watching Video Gamer Showcase. If there is a game you would like to see here on our show, please contact us here at TCI Cable Channel 28. Thanks for watching, and until next time, play it on hard.